Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, panic buying has begun in the East Coast as gas runs out and fuel stations run dry amid the hack pipeline. However, ladies and gentlemen, there is something in the background that people are not talking about. And I'm going to go ahead and cover that as soon as I go through this short article with you because I think that it's even more important than what's happening right now with the gas shortages in the East Coast. And just like that, the southeast of the United States is heading down a dark path similar to one of the 1970s gas shortages from Virginia to Florida to Alabama following the Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack. Even with Colonials set to restore systems by the weekend, shortages have already materialized as people panic hoard. Ladies and gentlemen, this is common human behavior. I believe that most of us understand the hoard mentality, meaning that if you see someone panic buying something and then maybe you ask, why are you doing that? And they tell you, then you start panic buying and then the dominoes begin to fall. So we as preppers, we need to realize that we need to get in front of these things. We need to get in front of the panic hoard. That way we can make sure that we're prepared. In all actuality, I haven't really covered this too much. I know a lot of channels have. However, there's something behind this that no one is talking about. And I really want to cover because it's important for us to be aware of. And it continues to say here, the real panic has yet begun as millions of Americans are waking up for work, hopping into their vehicles across the southeast and are hearing fuel shortages on the radio or reading push notifications on their phone. Driving down the street, they see rising fuel prices, signs at pumps that either read shortage or pump restrictions, or even see some gas stations closed. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, even though I don't live in the affected area, obviously I live in the exact opposite part of the country of the affected area, it may affect fuel prices here, but when I heard about this, did I rush out to get fuel? Now, I'm not patting myself on the back here. I'm just telling you what the benefits are of being prepared. Did I go out and rush to get fuel? No, because for the last several years, I've been preaching, and I think I just said it a couple of videos ago or, or on a live stream. Always make sure that you have enough fuel put aside to fill up at least each of your vehicle once. So if you have three vehicles, for example, that each take 20 gallons of fuel, then you should have 20 gallons of fuel set aside for each of those vehicles. And of course, you always want to maintain each of your vehicles at the very minimum at a half tank load, if not higher. And it says here on Twitter, users report one gas station is placing limits on fuel in central Alabama. The gas shortage is already hitting central Alabama, so I probably won't be working this time next week. Look at that. So, so here's something else that's going to affect the ability for people that want to go to work to be able to go to work. And you know, some people may say that this right here is people hoarding fuel. It really is not. I mean, you're looking at what, three, six, eight or nine gas cans right there that they're trying to fill up. That's 45 gallons. That doesn't really last that long, ladies and gentlemen, when you really think about it and calculate your daily driving miles if you're going to work every day. And here's another tweet that says, Good morning, y'all. There's another gas shortage throughout the Carolinas due to the shutdown of the pipeline. I do believe, ladies and gentlemen, that really we shouldn't be panicking about this, that the pipeline will be back up and running in a timely manner. However, we never know. So that's why we always continue, always continue to be prepared and always continue to fill in those gaps. And it says here, breaking the average retail gasoline price jumps to a six and a half year high, all the way up to $2.98, almost 99 cents per gallon. Gas shortages are being reported in the southeast of the United States amid the recent cyber attack. And uh, it has temporarily shut down one of the largest pipelines in the U.S. 
If you haven't heard, I believe that this pipeline supplies about 45% of the gasoline to the East Coast. So it is a very big deal if this actually stays down for a long time. The Colonial Pipeline is manually operating a segment of pipeline between North Carolina and Maryland and expects a complete system restore by the weekend. However, gas shortages are being reported from North Carolina to Florida to Alabama. And let me show you one last tweet here. And I'll continue to show you tweets, but I'll read this one to you. This person right here, Ms. Pentender, says that this gas station in Robbinsville is all out of gas. The clerk said manager told her it could be five days before they have gas again. And says that phones have been ringing off the hook from people calling around to see if there's gasoline available. Now ladies and gentlemen, what we're missing from this is, is that this was a cyber attack. And we live in a cyber world, I guess you can call it. Ask yourselves, where is most of your money? I know where most of my money is, right? But where is most of your money held? Yes, AP, what's the big deal? It's just money. Well, money is a tool, ladies and gentlemen, just like gasoline is a tool that we use to transport ourselves from point A to point B. Without gasoline, our vehicles cannot run. Money is a tool that we need in order to exchange for things that we need to live. Where is most of your money? Where is most of your personal information held? Instead of just having a cyber attack that affects one thing, imagine if we had a cyber attack that affects everything. So we need to be preparing for that. Where do you store your information? Where do you keep your money? Do you keep your money in a computer digit? Or do you at least keep some money at home in the form of cash? Do you only rely on credit cards and debit cards to transact? Or do you keep a little bit of money at home in cash just in case? Do you keep most of your wealth that you're planning to use for long term in a bank, in a 401k, in the stock market, even in cryptos? Although with cryptos, we do have a way out, which I'll talk about in a second. Do you keep all of your wealth on the internet? That's the question. And if you do, what would you do if we had a cyber attack that not only affected a pipeline, but affected everything? Then ladies and gentlemen, how much worse than this do you think that would be? For cryptocurrencies, the reason I bring up that there's something different is because I know some people are going to say, well, we have Starlink. And yes, you're correct. If the internet goes down and you have a Starlink connection, you can still access your cryptocurrencies. However, that's not most people, not even myself. I'm thinking about it, but haven't pulled the trigger on that one yet. But that's what we have to be thinking about, ladies and gentlemen. How much of our lives are on the internet? And then we have to start mitigating whether the internet is ever affected as a whole in the future. How would we get by? All right, ladies and gentlemen, short video today. I'm going to go ahead and leave it off at that. I have another short video coming up later on that is uh, pretty serious as well. It has nothing to do with this pipe shutdown, but it is something that we do have to keep our eye eyes on. So I'll be on the lookout for that. Having said that, thank you very much for joining in. I truly do appreciate you spending a little bit of your day here with me today. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper. I'm out.